Hey Church, it's great to have you connecting in with us today. Wherever you're connecting from, a big welcome. It's great to be part of a community joining together. Hey, there should be a QR code on your screen right now. Feel free to scan that. It will give you all the information about our church. We have physical locations, North Brisbane, South Brisbane, Central Queensland. If you live near one of those, we would love to meet you. Hey Church, we're about to worship and uh, I would love for all of us to just lean in and engage with what God is gonna do in each of us today. We'd love to pray for you and then let's worship. God, we thank you that you are so good and that you are here with us today. God, we choose to shift our attention and our focus onto you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on Church, let's worship. Yeah. 
set me free Look at the ones that give me life Grace flowing from His side No greater sacrifice What He's done What He's done All the glory and the honor to the Son future is heaven. I praise God for what he's done. Sing for the freedom he has won. Even death is dead and dying. His life has
from compassion. I, um, I hope Michael really believes in compassion because I really, really believe in compassion. And, uh, you know, compassion is an opportunity for us to make our world bigger. Uh, at, you know, at Life Church, we, we bring our tithes because they belong to God. We don't pay our tithes, we bring our tithes because they belong to God. And then we bring an offering to extend His influence around the world. And up the back there, you can grab a magazine about the things that Life Church are involved in. But the, one of the things we're involved in as individuals, not so much corporately, but together as individuals, it's all a bit tricky, is compassion. You know, uh, I remember growing up, and, and Telly was just showing me images of kids doing it really, really tough around the world. And I, I remember as a child feeling overwhelmed by that. Like, what can I possibly do? And of course, my parents reminded me if I ate my mashed potato, it would be better for the kids in Africa. Um, I'm not sure if that did actually help, but, uh, you know, eat everything. In, but what happened then, World Vision and Compassion came along and broke that big, massive problem down to one child. And I'll not be able to change the world, but I can change one child's world, and then two child's world, three. Uh, three and, and so we can make a difference. And, um, you know, I want to thank you for your faithful giving. I want to thank you for a spirit of generosity. I want to thank you for joining yourself to a bigger vision. And, um, you know, we've got our, obviously, our tithes. We've got our legacy offering. And then we've got compassion and things we do like this individually because we're God's people, God's kids wanting to make life better for somebody else's kids. And um, I'm really inspired by that. I want to pray for God's blessing. Lord, today I thank you for your blessing on each of us as we choose to step up and make our world bigger. I thank you, Lord, that you've called us to live in a bigger world than just us. And I thank you, Lord, that you've placed stuff in our hands so we can be a blessing. And Lord, I thank you that as we choose to bless others, you'll bless us so that we can bless more others. Lord, I thank you that you've called us to be generous, giving people. Lord, that one who waters others will be watered himself, that you will provide for our needs according to your riches and glory. So Lord, we give with confidence today because we know your promise, repeated promise in Scripture is that you resource give us so that we can be even more generous. Lord, thank you that you've positioned us to make a difference on the earth in Jesus' mighty name. Now, what I'd like you to do is stand to your feet and welcome Michael as he comes to inspire us about compassion. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Good morning, Life Church. So great to be here with you. Take your seats again. So great to be here with you and, and share about compassion. I just want to thank Pastor Jeff and Lee and the leadership of Life Church for partnering with Compassion. Um, the impact that you make together is cannot be overstated. It's significant. And so I want to thank you for that. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a moment. Um, I was here two years ago. I was at North last year and uh, my colleague Dean's over there this morning. I was here two years ago with my um, beautiful wife, Amanda. And she was pregnant at the time with our little baby girl, Zoe, and uh, Zoe's now 21 months old, and Zoe's already a big sister. She has a little sister as well, Layla, who's now uh, seven months, almost eight months old. <clears throat> and that brings our family to completion with eight children in our house. So we have a, a big house with lots of kids, and Amanda would have loved to have been here today, um, but our daughter Emily, who's 15, is at state uh, championships for dance this weekend. Um, so we have a big family. And so we have to replenish our pantry pretty regularly. The kids are always there. I'm like, it's full, it's great. And then two days later, I'm like, it's not great anymore. It's, it's, it's been diminished a little bit. But what I love is that as much as our kids sometimes say there's nothing to eat, there is always something to eat in our pantry and there's always something to eat in our fridge every single time. But for many around the world today, there's a, a thing going on right now called the global food crisis, <clears throat> which means for many, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. For millions around the world, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. As a, as a husband and as a father, I can't imagine doing everything I can to provide for my family and there's still not being anything there. I, I can't get my head around that. A world that's like that. But the good news is, is that there's millions of people around the world, like you are here this morning, who are partnering with Compassion, who are seeing children and their families released from poverty in Jesus' Name. You are making sure they've got food in the pantry and in the fridge or on the table. You're making sure these kids can go to school. You're making sure they've got the opportunity um, to have healthcare. You're making sure they get to hear about Jesus because they're connected to a loving, amazing local church. The impact that you're making in releasing kids from poverty in Jesus' Name is huge. As a church, you sponsor 216 children in Indonesia primarily. Why don't you give yourselves a round of applause? That's amazing. It's so good to see that 
many children sponsored um, as a church. And like I said, you're making sure they're getting all those things that they need and then they're connected to a loving local church. For those of you who don't know, there might be a couple of people here who don't know about Compassion. We've been around for 70 plus years partnering with local churches to release kids from poverty. 70 years. And there's three things that are key to us. We're Christ-centred. We're on about Jesus. We're unapologetic that we're on about Jesus. Every child in the Compassion Program right now, there's 2.2 million of them, will get a Bible and hear about Jesus. Do you know that on average every year, 125,000 kids around the world in Compassion's Program come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. And on average, just hold the applause for one second. On average, for each one of them that does, four of their family members do. So you're talking about six, seven, 700,000 people coming to put their faith in Jesus through this program every single year. That is worth a round of applause. That's worth giving God some praise for. So we're on about Jesus. We're, we're church-based. That means every one of our projects is based out of a local church. We love the local church. The local church through with Jesus is the hope of the world. And we're, we're partnering with the local church and we're child-focused. We know that if we can start helping release kids from poverty from the youngest possible age, that malnutrition won't get a hold of them. Hopelessness won't get a hold of them. Um, this whole idea that I can't be anything won't get a hold of them. A lack of education won't get a hold of them. We start working with them from the youngest age. They're released from poverty and the cycle of poverty is broken with their family. You know, as we talk about the youngest of kids, um, I was talking with JB during the week and you guys have um, decided to partner with a Mums and Babies project as well in Indonesia. I know I watched some of your legacy um, uh, giving and offering on, on, online um, a, a few months ago when that happened and you guys have raised the money or raising the money for that to, to support a Mums and Babies project in Indonesia. I can't tell you how important that is. You know, every year around 300,000 women around the world um, die in childbirth the vast majority of them are women who live in developing countries, low-income countries, and the vast majority of them wouldn't if they just had basic care and support. If they just had access to the health care that they needed, the vast majority of them would be here with us today. And that's what you're doing. You're making sure for those women and their babies that they've got a hope and they've got a future. You're making sure that they're cared for and looked after. So they're given all the practical help they need and then they're discipled. I visited a project in Indonesia, a mums and babies project um, about three or four years ago. And it was in this Islamic stronghold and you walk in and oppressive in the city, but you walk in, and it's like this little oasis of Jesus that you walk into. And they, these mums were all in there and they shared testimony after testimony of how they come to put their faith in Jesus. They were being trained in small business. What you guys are doing by giving to that, the, the, the hope that's in them now for them and their children is just amazing. I want to tell you a, a quick story um, before I finish today um, of a man named Oka. If we can bring his picture up on the screen, he's from Bali. Uh, he was a he's a compassion graduate. He grew up in the program. Uh, his dad uh, was a Hindu man in Bali who came to faith in Jesus. He put his hope in Jesus. He was from a very reputable, well-known, wealthy Hindu family. And when he did that, uh, his family cut him off altogether. But he had a heart, he's like, I've got to help the poor and I've got to help kids. And so he planted a church and started a school with this land. And then the government came in and uh, a few years later and took all the land off him, took everything off him. He, 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 was, he had nothing. He was left with nothing. Um, but his son, Oka, was able to be registered into the Compassion Program um, at the local church. So he went from wealth to poverty and was able to be registered in the program and supported through the program. Oka came to know Jesus and trust Him. And he, he graduated through the program and uh, got a job working for a big global surf brand in Bali. He moved into Denpasar from his uh, little village that was about an hour out of Denpasar. Moved into Denpasar, worked for this big global brand and life was good for him. He'd been released from poverty in Jesus' name. And then he, uh, he had a motorbike accident and was, was injured badly and was in hospital. And he said it was a turning point for him and his, another turning point for him in his life because he's like, God spoke to him and said, look at what you've been given. I want you to be giving back to this. And he got this vision of what he could do. And so he decided, I'm gonna go back to my local community, Mundak Clove. I'm gonna go back there and I'm gonna start a business and I'm gonna employ as many people as I can in my local community. And he, so he started, he named it the same as the town. He started a, a bed and breakfast, a tourist accommodation called Mundak Clove um, in his local community that he grew up in. He volunteers in the local church Compassion Project. He follows Jesus and he hires at this place. You can actually look 
look it up on Airbnb, uh, on, on um, Booking.com. It's got a 9.3 out of 10 star rating. Um, go and stay there sometime. It's it's just outside of Denpasar in, in this local community and he employs all the people, all the parents of the kids who are in the program in his community um, to run this, this accommodation. I mean, how good is that? to see that he grew up in poverty, but was released from poverty and says, I'm not just gonna accept that and go, this is great, but I'm gonna give back to it and keep giving to it and keep giving to it and give back to the next generation. And so when you release a child from poverty in Jesus' name, when you sponsor them, you're making sure not only that they're released from poverty, not only that their family will be, but then the flow on of what they give back is astronomical. It's incredible. I just wanna encourage you in your sponsorship this morning. I wanna say thank you to all of you who sponsor. Thank you so much for your support and your sponsorship. Um, For those of you who don't yet sponsor, we have a child here called Dylan who's been waiting 570 days from Bali for a sponsor. He needs to be sponsored this morning. We've got others who've been waiting a long time as well. Um, and so for those of you who don't get sponsored, please come and sponsor a child today. For those of you who do sponsor, just ask yourself the question, do I have room for one more in my family? Do I have room for one more or two more in my family? You know, sponsoring a child is $48 a month, $1.60 a day. Takeaway coffee is five bucks in most places. That's three kids. Takeaway coffee a day is three kids. That's amazing what something so small can do, something so big in the lives of these kids. And so today I would love for you to come and see me at the stand. You know, everywhere I go, I meet people who sponsor kids and it's always an honour. I meet 15 year olds who come up and go, I've got money with my part-time Macca's job. I had one last year came up to me before the service started. I knew you were coming today. I've talked to my parents. I've got the okay. I, I work at Macca's. I've been there for a year. I'm sponsoring a child. He was so excited about it. I meet families who come up who might have three kids and they come up with their kids after the service saying, kids, let's pick out some kids to sponsor today. I meet people who are, who are retirees who are like, you know what, I'll sponsor a teenager who needs a few more years to get through the program. We'll be like a grandparent to them. You guys have an amazing opportunity to be part of it. Thank you for your support. Thank you for that so much. And we'd love to see you afterwards today. I'm gonna leave you with a really quick video um, of a family in Australia connecting with a family in Indonesia through sponsorship. Thank you guys. thank God for you. In quiet moments and when life gets loud, I feel connected to you. I see your smiles in my son's face as he reads your letters. I pray for you, dear mother of a different dear son. Sometimes I imagine what life is like for you. I try to see myself in your situation. Life is so busy, every day is full, but I look forward to meeting you. I want to see our boys play together. This life is so fragile and precious. I work and work, but can't give everything my family needs. But I know the one who can. I pray you will live in him and that he will fill your heart with courage and grace. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see you. Your family, your life is blessing to mine. I want to thank you for thinking and praying for my family from across oceans. I pray the same prayer for your son and mine. May their hearts love God and always give their best. This is a day we will never forget. We are different, but we are the same. Created in His image. Children of the living God. Filled with His love for us. Be of great courage, sister. Live in hope. He is with us. He is with us.
That clap was for me, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Thanks, Michael. That was, that was brilliant. Wasn't that great? Excellent. And wasn't the worship great this morning? I think um, Jasmine was on fire, actually. I loved it. As she walked out, she was saying, who's glad they got out of bed this morning? Who's glad they had a shower this morning? Who's glad they brushed their teeth this morning? And I turned to Michael and said, I'm very glad that you washed and you brushed your teeth this morning. <laughs> so if you're very glad that the person beside you <laughs> had a good wash, brushed their teeth this morning, how about you just turn to the person beside you and say, thank you? Okay? Thank you very much. I'm glad you're in the house and I'm glad you brushed your teeth this morning. And just want to say, if someone is beside you is not saying that to you, it might be a word from God. <laughs> it could just be a word from God. You know, that's what we're preaching on at the moment. And I find that subject, I don't know about you, I find that subject, hearing from God, extremely exciting. Is anyone else, anyone else enjoying it? I think it's one of the most powerful things that we can ever take hold of. I think it's one of those things, like I was just being a little bit facetious there, you know, you might be hearing from God, but that's how God works. God wants to talk to us. You know, when I was in Bible college, I was one of those special Bible college students. My first week in Bible college, they called me in the office and said, Alan, one more joke like that, you're out. <laughs> okay. When I was in Bible college, I had this special ministry of, of um, annoying the daylights out of super spiritual people. <laughs> so we had this one girl and... and, and this does have a reason I'm telling you. Okay, so bear with me. When I was in Bible college, I was still being redeemed. So every day I drove down the transit lane by myself, okay? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but when I'd get to Bible college, there was this one girl, Angela, and she would say, you're evil. I am praying that you get booked. And I just looked at her and said, well, I'm praying I don't. We'll see who's got more faith. <laughs> right, so... Every day I'd go down there, every day I'd wave. Last day of, of Bible college, okay, I'm driving down. And as I'm driving by, I see Angela and go, beep, beep. She pulled out behind me. We went over the hill. I knew where the police would come in and out. So I used to watch through the windscreens, right? So I saw the police duck out. I pushed in, she got booked. Okay. <laughs> So we got to Bible college and she says to me, you're evil, you are evil. I can't believe you do that. I said, girl, if you can't hear from the Holy Spirit, it's your own fault. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. I think I only just got out of there with my life. <laughs> but I've got to tell you something. Although I'm t speaking really cheeky and I'm being silly and what I was doing was wrong, I want to tell you something. I do hear from God that much. God does step into my life and says, oh, look out, Alan, and regularly tells me what I'm doing is silly, okay? <laughs> but we can take it for granted. We can do without it. We can go for, I went for so long in my life and even in my Christian life without even having a desire to hear from God and then I found out he wanted to speak to me that clearly. He wanted to help me that much. He wanted to be that involved in my life. You know, I had the privilege of, of going to Israel. And as I got to one of the, the great places that you go to, and, and um, I will look at my notes. John 5, we see a story of going to the pool of Beth, that we say Bethesda. They sort of say it like Bethsaida. Okay, but that pool, okay. And when I got there, I was interested. I wanted to suss this place out, okay. Everyone else on the tour with me just sort of walked around and looked at it and, and they were really impressed and they were praying and they were enjoying it. But I was there on a mission. I wanna, I wanna tell you why I was there on a mission. That story has never made sense to me. Because when God speaks to me, he doesn't speak to me the way that story reads. You see, if you read the story of the Pool of Bethsaida, it actually says that it was said that the people who were there, an angel would stir the water. You know the, you know the story? An angel would stir the water and the first one in would get healed and everybody else suck rocks. Is that God? Did, did it annoy anybody else in this room? Because I read that and I'm like, that's not how God talks to me. 
that, that doesn't make sense to me because that's not the God that speaks to me every day, that tells me how much He loves me, tell much, tells me how much He loves broken people, challenges me to look out from my life. I am so thankful that people like Michael get a word from God and live in it and share what they've got with us because it lifts our eyes. But I looked at that story, that does not make sense. You know, I was the only one in our tour group that noticed the sign over the side that explained it. Do you realise that the people that were going there and sitting on the patios were actually being scammed and there was a valve between the two pools and someone would go and pull the valve and it would flow from one into the other and the water would stir and they got charged money for being there. And all of a sudden I look at it and I'm like, knew it wasn't God. But you know how I knew that? Because God speaks to my heart. I wouldn't have known that if I just read the text. I wouldn't have known who God was if I hadn't had those moments in my life when I was broken and busted or rejected and feeling bad and all of those things. And God just speaks into my life and says, hey, I still love you, mate. I still care for you. I'm still here. This is who I am. I'm, I'm going to restore your soul. Anybody else need that every now and then? Anybody else look in the mirror sometimes and you're like, oh, not even a mother would love that face. Like, we have those days, don't we? And they're the days that when we're hearing from God, life is different. Life is different when we're at that place. One of the questions I had when I was growing up, I used to hear people say, oh, God said this to me and God said that to me. Anyone else get really annoyed by that? Oh, and God said, and then I went and did, and then God did, and God said. And, and I used to look at that and just go, you're a freak, mate. In my brain, I'm just like, what is wrong with you? But now, it's like breathing. But now, I don't know where I'd be without that voice. I don't know, but I'll tell you though, sometimes it's my voice. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? And we need to know God's word and we need to know who our God is so that we can discern when it's us and when it's God. But don't let those things stop you from wanting to hear from God. Don't let those things. So I know we've been talking about hearing from God and we, we hear all these great things. I wanna give you the questions that I had. One of the things I love about Pastor Jeff's preaching and, you know, and when he encourages me in my preaching and while he's teaching me and, and leading me as my pastor, he says, answer the questions that people ask when they look in the mirror on a Monday morning. I love those questions. I love being allowed to tie a kick God. Is this good? Does this work? What does it mean? How, how's, it, how's it gonna be? What, what if God tells me to do something I don't wanna do? And, and then what if I don't do it? Am I gonna get swallowed by a whale? Okay, I'm not the only one that's gone there, am I? I mean, seriously, is, uh, we'll, we'll contextualise it. Am I going to get swallowed by a truck? I, I don't know. Is, is something going to get me if I don't do what God says when I've heard His voice? No, you're just going to miss out a bit. I'll answer that question for you. No, you're just going to miss out a bit. You just won't have the best. You'll just go away knowing there could have been more. That's what you're going to have. You know, <laughs> I look at that and I think, what if his word that he lays on my heart, what if it just makes me uncomfortable? And there's been times in my life where I thought, oh, that wouldn't be very nice. I'll be honest with you. Now, if I'm not uncomfortable, I know I'm not hearing from him. I love it when David in the Bible says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your direction and correction, you working in my heart, you giving me something to do every day, gives me peace in my life because I know I'm growing and I know I'm getting healthy. I wanna encourage you today, when you hear from God, it might not be comfortable, but it will be good for you. You're gonna look back at it and go, oh, I'm so glad I listened to that. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was brilliant. Oh, that was just exactly what I needed at that time. My biggest question, if I hear from God, is it going to make me one of them? Am I going to be a kook? 
am I going to be weird? <laughs> Even as I say that, that, that boat had sailed. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm like, how do you get more weird? Like, seriously, like, look what God made. I, I just look at him like, hey, it's not. You see, sometimes when I heard people and they were talking about hearing from God, they, they did, it, did it in another language. Oh, thus saith the Lord. And this is what God shareth with me. I want to tell you something. If you're hearing from the Holy Spirit, he's going to correct you on that. Because I want to tell you, you, do you know why the Holy Spirit was given to us? Come on, Acts 1. Acts 1. Wait here for power from on high that's going to empower you to be my witnesses to them. So if we're talking a language that they don't understand, don't blame it on the Holy Spirit. God's going to empower us to reach real people. Don't worry about Holy Spirit making you a kook. You do a good enough job all by yourself. That's us, not Him. I'll tell you right now, God wants to change our language so that it makes sense to our next door neighbour. God wants to challenge us to do real things that mean something in the real world. God wants to ask you to meet a need that you didn't even know was there in a real and practical way. God wants to make a difference in real lives. That's our God. The weird language and that sort of stuff, that's our egos. I want to tell you, you're safe to hear from the Holy Spirit. He's going to do something good for you. You know, the Word of God's really clear about it. It <laughs> tells me in Psalm 37 verse 4 that if I delight myself in the Lord, He's going to give me the desires of my heart. So I desire a, a brand new GT Falcon and I desire a... No, what it's saying is if I put God first in my life, He's going to change those stupid desires that are decaying and getting worse and He's going to change my desires into exactly what is good for me, which is what He's asking anyway. You see, if we just give God place and then we give His Word in our heart place, it fulfills us, it grows us, it meets our needs, it, it, it changes our needs so that they can be fulfilled because the needs we have that are shaped by the world will never be satisfied. You see, it creates something in our heart and our mind that, you know, my next verse, Romans eight sixteen, the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. You see, when we hear from God, the first thing that He does is let us know how much He loves us. Is there anyone that doesn't need a bit more of that? You know, I, I, get, I get the privilege of going out and doing stuff on properties and, and meeting small communities. I've got a little community out near Bellyando Crossing and they asked me to come out and do baby dedications. And they asked me to come out and do weddings. I did a wedding out there just the other day. And, and I've got this little community, you know, and none of them go to church, but they've asked me into their community. Okay. And when I go out there, I, I got to speak to them about, yeah, hey guys, what is a dedication? I said, a, a dedication right, is we thank God for this amazing gift. And then we dedicate ourselves to raising this child in a way that they will know how much God loves them. They will know the heart of God for their life. And these guys, like lots of them don't go to church and I look at them and say, do you want to know why we need that? Because the world's going to put them down. And the world's going to say nasty things to them. And the world's going to try and take their gifts and rub them in the dirt. And the world's going to break their heart and the world's going to do all of this. And they need a foundation in their life of knowing how much God loves us. That foundation will empower you. That foundation will change the way you walk on every day of your life. But I believe with all my heart that you can't read that foundation. You have to hear it. My favourite Bible verse... I. I I don't get in trouble, but every time I bring up Galatians 4, the church in Clermont goes, here we go. Here we go. That's his verse. It is my verse. You know what it says in Galatians 4? It says, because we're sons of God, he sent the spirit of his son into our hearts that cries out, Abba, Father. You see, when we give God place, the first thing that he says in our life is how loved and accepted and how much he wants to be a part of our life. 
the first thing that we'll hear is a foundational belief and, and it won't be something we've read in a book about what Jesus dying on the cross for us and it won't be those things. We need that. We need to read the Word. But until God says it in your heart, it won't change the way you walk. Until you hear that on a daily basis, it won't change the way you feel about yourself. Until you know in your workplace when everyone puts you down that God's in your ear telling you how much He loves you and how, how successful you are and all the good things that He has for you and the gifts that He's placed in you, that won't affect your life until you can hear that voice. See, I, I spend my life, every day, I look for an opportunity to tell someone the difference between religion and relationship with a God that loves them. And do you know what the difference is? Hearing His voice. It's hearing His voice. You see, my walk with God is not a, a tradition. It's not a religion, it's not something that I've learnt. It's something that He speaks in my heart. So this morning, I wanna, I wanna pray for people. The first group of people that I wanna pray for, you might not know Jesus. You can't hear from Him till you know Him. The thing that, um, I did have another Bible verse, but I'm talking too much. My wife, I'm not looking at my wife right now because she'll just nod her head and say, as usual, Matthew 7, 7 and 8, it says, Ask, seek and knock. Our God is a gentleman. He doesn't come into your heart. He doesn't grab you around the neck. He doesn't force his way into your life. He just gently knocks and says, Do you want to open the door to me today? You see, this is the character of God that I know because he speaks to my heart. I want to ask you this morning, have you ever said yes to Jesus? Because he's a gentleman. Have you ever asked him to speak to your heart? We've got to ask, seek and knock. He doesn't force, kick and whatever. Right now, can I just ask, can we close our eyes for a second? Just, just for a second. I want to tell you why we're closing our eyes. We're not closing our eyes so no one's looking at me. Mate, if we're making decisions like that, what's it going to mean on Monday morning? Nothing. We're closing our eyes because this is a deal. This is a, this is a relationship. This is a move between you and God, not between you and anybody else. And I want you just to be able to focus on God just for a moment. So I believe there's people in this room and God's reaching out, just wanting to touch your heart this morning and say, you can trust me. You've been holding back and you're just not sure, but you can trust me. If that's you this morning and you want to say yes to Jesus, can you just lift your hand up? I want to pray with you this morning. I'm not going to ask you to come out the front. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray with you this morning and help you to ask Jesus into your heart. Start that journey. Start that relationship this morning. Let's pray, church. Are we ready to pray? Dear Lord Jesus, this is my decision. Please come into my heart. Forgive me for doing life my way. Heal the results of that and step into the driver's seat. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, there's one more group of people I want to pray with this morning. You might have been like me. People are here from God are kooks. You're missing out. You're ripping yourself off. I'm so glad that I had people who spoke to me black and white, plain as day, and told me about what God's voice would be like. I wanna give you an opportunity to have that foundation in your life this morning. The Bible says, ask, seek and knock and persist in asking. If you wanna go on that journey today of hearing God's voice, you want the Holy Spirit to speak in you in a greater way. You want direction, you want ears that hear and a heart that understands. Then. I just want you right in your seat, right where you are. Just lift your hand say, I need more of that, Lord. I need more of that. I wanna hear your voice. I want your direction. I want clarity so I can walk with strength. I need more of that. You just stretch out to God. I'm just gonna pray over us right now. Mighty God, Father, I just thank you for the clarity that you desire more than us. 
I thank You, Father, for Your truth of who You are, that You want to speak into our heart and encourage and release us into a greater level of understanding in You. Father, empower us to hear Your voice because our neighbours need it. Our friends need it. And right now, Holy Spirit, we are opening our heart to You. And in Jesus' Name, we are being filled, encouraged, and that gift of understanding and hearing Your voice is being released in us right now. And Father, we thank You for it. In Jesus' Name. Amen. You know, it's always a privilege to get to share around God's Word. It's always a privilege to be down here and it's always a privilege to have amazing pastors. I just want to thank Jeff and Lee for all they do. I want to thank you guys. And more than anything, we just want to thank Holy Spirit for what He does in our hearts, don't we? Well, let's give Him a clap, eh? Hey, what an incredible word. My prayer is that that was an encouragement to you and a challenge for each of us to continue to lean into our relationship with Jesus. If you said yes to Jesus during our service, we would love to connect with you. We'd love to help you take your next step. So please reach out and let's see how we can connect and help you to find community. Have a brilliant week. Hope to see you again soon.